Welcome back, 0K fans, to the 0K222 Anniversary Tournament. We are into the loser's second semifinals. I've just figured, like, round three or whatever. Because it might take a little while. JXG... I'm oh, right, right, but then... JXG did win game one, which actually the teams are wrong, too. Sorry about this. We are group... What was JXG's? Lang... Langustine, and that is... Backwards, okay. So, yeah, Icy Run, a map which takes four... Freaking ever to be done, so yeah, that happens. But in either case, it is one game done. All right. So yeah, not a whole lot's happened. A lot of stuff gone back and forth, and not a lot of it's actually amounted to much. Although Green Screen Cat Lady are managing to do a fair bit of damage, and do have the economic advantage. To be fair, actually, I've held the economic advantage very well thanks to really early geothermal plant, which we aren't seeing coming out here from. From JXG and Nuzzy. They tried, but unfortunately the terraforming didn't quite work out. Honestly, I'm not sure why they terraformed that way. But it does seem like attrition wise fairly even. All the dominations are coming in here to try to help out for Cat Lady, and that might work. Hard to say. I'm not entirely sure. I feel like there's some limitations there, but hey, it might do the trick. And it looks like JXG and Nuzzy deciding they might actually just call it. Kind of sucks that the geothermal plant didn't work, though. Yeah, 34 to 15. Massive economic lead. Especially with really good use of overdrive. Like, particularly good use of overdrive. Not a whole lot was done on the other side. So, yeah, that didn't quite work out. Very early push, and that is going to be that. So we actually get an even game, an even series, right? So they get to game three. Right in time as we come back to a rather chaotic setup. I mean, yeah, that happens sometimes. So, yeah, we have... We're into game two of Loser Semifinals 2. We'll be moving to game three. I know I call it that just because of the second thing with four players. Whatever. I don't know. Loses round three, loses semifinals. I don't care. So yeah. Lagostine, Cat Lady against each other. Whoever wins that goes against Gregory, Buzzy Beetle, and whoever wins that goes against North Chilean G and Rar. So everything's kind of lined up. It's this big gauntlet. Cat Lady and Green Squig put themselves in a position where they might be able to get into a round three. And it's a matter of who's going to win, and it feels kind of even. But it will be one more map, one more game for this to get to game three before we actually get into something. Oh, sorry. Game three's on. Nice run. I don't know what game three's on. I haven't picked the map yet. But yeah, Icy Run, not a map that you'd expect to have a whole lot going for either. Like, it's sort of, you can't really come back on that map. We were talking about comebacks in the chat earlier, for those of you who aren't. Hadn't watched the earlier stuff or had just just joining us. We we're talking about how comebacks are kind of iffy, and it's relevant. But it's still kind of I'm not sure how relevant it is. Wait, intersections available? Seriously, the band of my existence is actually a map available in this tournament. No, it's not. It's not on this list. You cannot play Intersection. No. Oh, that's a different... What the heck do they want? Hmm. Field Devices is an option. They're trying to pick maps. Not sure which maps will work. Yeah, Fields of Ices is totally valid, so. So I might view Fields of Ices, a map which I haven't seen on Zero K in a while. It's kind of like Icy Run, because of how it's kind of slow and doesn't have to be of room for comebacks, but actually it's a bit more so. There's a bit more money on the field, and it's just overall... 
more room to go around hills. And possibly do something with the hills. I mean, I'm not really entirely confident because, I mean, they're still... Still kind of tricky. Oops. Come on, type hands. Yeah, it's going to be interesting how that works. I'm not sure what they're going to go for in terms of actual maps. Because I I I Fields of Isis is one of those maps that, like, it's big, doesn't have a huge amount of room to do stuff. There's this choke point right here that defines a lot of the map. So probably going to see, like, spiders and air. I feel like that's going to happen. Yeah, if we get that, then it could do the trick. Like spiders and air, I can see that. Looks like we have shield bots and spiders coming up from Cat Lady and Squig from the We Are group. On the other hand, Langustine is going for spiders and tanks. Interesting. Okay. I can kind of see that. Spider Stanks coming in for Langustine. I can, early Kodachi, early something, not sure what. Same time Flea is coming in for Cat Lady Green Squig going in for early constructor. Not even worrying about it too much, just going for the early reclaim, because there is a lot of reclaim to get early on. Like 500 metal right next to the opening. I mean, really, on your side of the map, there's anyone's team's side of the map, there's 3,000 metal reclaim. So we're going to be seeing a lot of that for certain. It's just that's how it goes. This map is Reclaim Central. But of course, that the question is, what are you gonna do with that Reclaim when you get it? What are you gonna spend it on? You've got a lot of units you can build. Which ones are you gonna go for? And I do like the use of the fleas here. I mean, it sounds like Nuzzy wasn't intending to go for spiders, but Hey, fleas are still actually going to be somewhat useful. Actually, in general, spiders are going to be useful. You get the scouting going. You get the... Oh, that's, that is unfortunate. But yeah, you get scouting going. You get the rest of the game set up for using the hills. You can easily raid around. I was talking about how comebacks might be difficult, largely because of the choke points. But with spiders, that's not really a concern. In fact, backyard expansion has become much harder to defend. Just because spiders can get past everything. Partly why I was expecting air early on, but hey, spiders will do the trick too. So, whichever works, that is what we're going to be seeing. And I like that. Of course, one thing I'm a little bit curious about is what the tanks are going to do. Ogres, okay, that makes sense. I can see, I can see the logic for ogres. I'm not sure I completely agree, but I understand the logic behind it. But at the same time... It's taking a little while to build up, because the thing is 31 metal per second... Oh, sorry, 24 metal per second between the two factories. Like, ogres are expensive. They're 500 metal each, so it takes about a minute to build them. And that's, you know, in contrast to building all this other stuff, the redbacks, the, the metal extractors, everything else. Especially as the Eastern team, as... As Langustine is... Or Langustine... Langustine? As Langustine is... A little bit behind economically, actually. Largely due to reclaim, though. That's actually the biggest thing, is that Langustine isn't going for the reclaim, while we're seeing We Are Groot going... They've taken most of the reclaim. Or at least over by Green Squig has taken most of the reclaim. So certainly done a pretty good job there. On the other hand, though, with this Ogre coming in here, not a whole lot of units that are going to be getting in its way. We'll have to deal with this commander, though. Not an upgrade commander, and it's going for the Faraday, which would take a little while to build. Although, if it goes far enough back, it might have a chance with the Faraday. I don't see it, but at the same time, there's the red back over to the north. I'm going to put up a bunch of bandits, and does go down, but, I mean, it got rid of more than its cost, so it's definitely worth it. But now, Ogre v. Commander. Ogre's not going to be able to take this. Not with the, ba not with the shields. 
Convict Shield's definitely saving the day. I gotta say, the Ogre is actually doing a pretty good job. Well, he's doing a fine job. Threatening the commander, pushing back some of the defenses, opening everything up as far as making sure that the Eastern team can actually build up and build into the map. So yeah, there's definitely a lot going for them there. Unfortunately, that Ogre still dies inside of the territory of We Are Groot, so it's going to be a lot harder for, for Langustine to actually, you know, use that. But hey, another Ogre's up. Third one's coming up shortly. And expansions have been going in favor of Langustine. Just reclaim, really. And the reclaim is still available for Langustine. They can take it whenever they like. So they might just be trying to delay taking the reclaim until after they've gotten a reasonably good position. And that's the thing, is that this is going to be... Sorry, I'm getting distracted by chat. People in the stream chat are talking about how Zero K is a much faster game than, like, Balance Annihilation. Like, saying that Balance Annihilation, 1v1 in 30 minutes sounds agonizingly long to me. But again, that's why I play Zero K, because I have no patience. Also, I don't have a huge amount of... Well, I have some free time, but... Not enough to try to get good at a game where you're regularly playing half hour to an hour long games. But anyway, back to this, though. We have, well, at least a reasonably good position as far as artillery goes. I mean, there's, that's what the cliffs are for. Really helping the range of the spiders. I mean, helping the range, helping the positioning, making it much harder to defend because you can't really rely on choke points. And unfortunately, it also means you can't really rely on radar, which, granted, hasn't been built much for... Well, it's been built a little bit for Langustine. Actually, I have quite a bit of it, come to think of it. Whether or not they actually make good use of it, well, it kind of remains to be seen, and honestly, it feels like they haven't yet. Especially a lot of their game plan seems to be focused entirely around building ogres. Ogres and minotaurs, not a terrible position, but it feels like kind of a 1v1-y thing to do. I feel like with the amount of skirmishes coming up in a 2v2 game, ogres are not going to be able to do that much damage. Or not be able to get in and actually help. And they'll certainly try, and they're not going to be useless. But it's going to be tricky. Although, on the other hand, when you have that, it's kind of a light assault force alongside the, you know, the Venom Redback or Venom Hermit approach being used elsewhere. That could actually still do the trick. On top of the fact that this entire expansion is just completely undefended, that is Nuzzy going for a very nice harass here in the back lines. I mean, already, it's We Are Groot is behind economically, and having these fleas come back here and add even more insult to injury just makes that even worse. Like, absolutely tearing things apart. At 60 metal per second to what's going to be now, like, 36 metal per second once the dust settles. That is a nice bit of harassment. Unfortunately, only gets rid of two metal extractors. Still worth it, though, and actually able to get some scouting in, too. Might be able to get rid of another metal extractor, too. This flea going over the hill here. No, it doesn't go for it. Instead, just evades the rest of the fleas. Actually, could theoretically go back down and start re-harassing. That'd be pretty cool. It wouldn't likely do much damage, though. The rest of the fleas would come in. Tear it apart. But it's a neat little thing to have happen. Gotta be honest. Hmm. Okay, 400 professional. I should correct myself. Apparently, BA 1v1s end in 5 minutes usually. Okay, that's good. Although, it might be one of those things where it's like, you made one mistake and lost, and those are kind of frustrating. I feel like Zero K, decisive games that go back and, that seem to go back and forth where, like, the players actually are doing interesting things are like 10 minutes long, but it's 10 minutes a lot of really exciting stuff. I don't know, is that true in Balance Annihilation? It's like 5 minutes of really exciting back and forth stuff that finally ends with a commander being blown up? Or is it just 5 minutes of build up? And then one fight, and then that's it. Alright. At any rate, we are Groot, definitely having a bit of a hard time, on top of the fact that now we're going to have you know, Venom, Recluse, and Hermits coming around the back. That, that's Nuzzy as well. Nuzzy is really just dominating the entire northwest side of the map. Bit of an issue there, honestly. Like, it's becoming rather difficult to work with, just because of the fact that the side of the map is being so... is just taken so effectively. Not a whole lot that can be done about that, other than to come in... With spiders of their own. I mean, you know, Reckless, Reckless Redback, maybe. 
But no, going for crabs instead, and going for air units. Another pretty good choice, to be honest. That's... I can agree with that. But the problem, of course, is the Hermits can come around the back and start ripping apart all this economy. And while there is a Stinger being built up, I don't think it'll be built up in time, assuming that the Hermits... Yeah, they are going in straight in. It's a minute. They are not going to take a minute to get in there. Those Hermits are going to be able to do a lot of damage. And again, more Ravens are coming in. So that'll help. But is it going to be enough? No, not quite. That Stinger is not... No, that's not going to be it. Stinger will not be up in time. Certainly going to try, but is not going to succeed. And that's Dead Stinger. Dead Stinger. Hermit's doing their job quite well, and not much more to be said. That's the Weaver down. Will be a little bit more harassment coming in here to try to get rid of these Hermits. But the problem is the Hermits are the harassment. And they're not going down fast. So one of them might go down. Oh, Nuzzy's not paying much attention. One of them burns up, the other one gets hit. So that is it for the Hermits, but still got rid of the got rid of the Weaver. That to me is the biggest deal. At the same time, frontline flanking coming in, dealing boatloads of damage on top of the fact that all these tanks are already in place. Emissaries is making the shield ball harder and harder to hold on to. I mean, we've seen throughout the tournament people finding different ways to try to counter shield ball. I think Emissary might work, although of course you have to be tank factory to make it work. But that might have been the reason for going tanks, just to get Emissary just in case shield bots came up. And then that happens to work. But otherwise, I don't see that really working out. I mean, we have the shield ball coming in. It's trying. It's getting some damage on the Minotaurs. She's managed to get rid of one of the Minotaurs. But that's at the cost of the entire shield ball. So this, this is going to be another setup where, honestly, we are Groot not in a good spot. Green Squig just lost their commander. Bunch more spiders are coming in. I mean, a lot of... Phoenix is trying to get rid of them. But it may not be enough. And on top of that, the crab, yeah, it's there. Doing a fair bit of damage. Actually, the Redbacks won't be able to get rid of it in time. So, no, it's valid. That, that works. That actually is getting, not really going to get rid of the units. You know, the crab is able to at least help defend. But the entire south side has been taken in the process. And that is a big deal. Like... But the south side gone, there's really not much else to go with. I mean, the economy has been cr cut in half. As soon as any... I mean, the, the welders are already here. They're already reclaiming. If they just All they need to do is build a few metal extractors on top of the reclaim, and then that's basically a map control. Very clearly in favor of Langustine. Admittedly, there's a drop... What are you dropping? Ah, dropping the crap. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, Hercules is trying its best to get backline crab. See how this works? It's a bold move, but, I mean, they kind of need to do something like this. Be able to get rid of the caretakers. It could actually do the trick. I mean, it's certainly going to force some of the units to come back. It's certainly going to, you know, reduce things, but... Or reduce the force on the front line, but I don't know. I mean, the Hermits are already here. The damage can already be dealt. It's distracting against the caretakers. That's the important thing. This is buying time in case other units need to come in. And that's the key thing. If those, if those Hermits can at least slow this crab down other stuff can be built other things can be done to help distract it I mean if the crab can be pushed that's even better if it's forced to move like it's forced to stand up and unarmor the crab basically can't do much I guess we're one of the caretakers though that is still useful but it's not the ideal two caretakers good at this point caretaker is kind of the only option bit of a shame that the hermit is pushing it into the caretakers it's also pushing it into the lotus range which is the entire point as that crab is going to go down 200 100 health. Yeesh, that is... There we go. That That is done. Gets rid of the Lotus at the end, but... Two caretakers in the Lotus. I mean, not bad, but your opponents have five times your economy, so it may not be worth it. And that's going to be it. Cat Lady throws in the towel. I can't say I'm surprised, but I do appreciate that daring attempt. Like, that was certainly... That was certainly neat. Didn't work, but was cool. And that is going to be it. That is going to be the lower bracket semifinals 2... Our second semifinals going in to the lower bracket pre-finals. We will be having Langustine up against Gregory Buzzy Beetle. And Gregory Buzzy Beetle basically, I mean, they, I mean, both these are the people got knocked out of the upper bracket, uh, the semifinals. So we are into the top four teams, like undeniably top four teams, just for the way this is, the way this is broken down. All the teams coming in from the lower brackets that were knocked out earlier are gone. 
So, North Shining and Rar, Langustine, Gregory Buzzy Beetle, and Endgame Boss, the only teams remaining in this tournament. So we go into the la the third, possibly last, third or fourth last match of this tournament. We will be back with that. Stay tuned. <laughs>